If there's one thing we're willing to bet, it's that you've nearly canceled your sub 10 times because people in your BG Blitz throw every game in the dumbest way possible. But luckily, there are a handful of specs that are so good that they can actually solo carry in BGs even when your team is trying to let you down. So stick around as we rank every ranged DPS in our BG Blitz tier list from best to worst. Now before anyone gets confused, let's be clear. Having your class being S tier doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to play it. There's a reason the pros always rise to the top in BG Blitz despite their spec being mid tier, and that's because they know exactly how the maps work and how to play for those objectives, regardless of the power of their class. Because in BG Blitz, every spec is more or less viable to some extent, as long as you have a fundamental understanding of each battleground. To help you climb, we've designed a simple course that covers every BG Blitz map so you can just jump in and play without all the hassle. Throughout the course, we'll teach you the best strategies for every BG, including mistakes to avoid, allowing you to even shot call and carry your team to victory. Additionally, with our improved fundamental damage courses, we'll help you deal as much pressure as possible in those small skirmishes and team fights, which, let's be real, are basically just arena games without nameplates. Skill Cabs allows you to speed run the learning process and get ahead of the competition faster than everyone else. So much so that we guarantee you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. For now, let's get back to the video. To kick things off, we'll be covering Marksmanship Hunter, who easily fall into the S tier as they check all the criteria you need to excel in BG Blitz, such as mobility to allow you to cross the map, which is huge to grab flags, take bases, and rotate on maps like Silver Shard, stealth to enable you to defend and play aggressive on enemy flag carriers and nodes, high damage, which enables victories in teamfights and skirmishes, crowd control to win bases and set up kills, and how much utility it can bring to the team to assist each player. So by every metric, MM Hunter is one of the most powerful ranged classes in BG Blitz. This is mainly because of its crazy high damage and skirmishing ability, allowing it to win out 1v1s or 2v2s very often, enabling their team to consistently win bases. It's also perfect at killing flag carriers due to its massive single target damage and fantastic instant CC, like trap and scatter, meaning that capture the flag maps become a breeze, and couple that with marksmanship strength strong defensive of two walls, a heal, and aspect of the turtle, it's not exactly going to die very fast when there are no supports around on the offensive team. Other than its high damage profile, crowd controls, and defensives, Marksmanship Hunters also have excellent mobility with disengage. But the elephant in the room here is really feign death, which with mount speed being increased drastically in Blitz is one of the best things about MM Hunter, allowing them to drop combat instantly and cross the map whenever they want. And to round out its mobility, Marksmanship also has camouflage stealth, meaning it can be an excellent base defender, as well as being able to ninja nodes without anyone knowing where they are traveling to next. As as for its utility, well, having heroism is nothing to sniff at, and Master Call can actually be pretty handy in a pinch, which of course are both enabled by it having access to a pet, another excellent tool for defending bases and spinning nodes. So in conclusion, thanks to its ability to have a crazy impact on literally every single map, Marksmanship earns its spot in the S tier. Moving on, we then have Beast Mastery Hunters, who were previously dominating an arena with their high consistent damage. Sadly for Blitz though, these long drawn out fights aren't really that regular, so their ramp damage doesn't really come to full fruition. And their cleave damage is honestly some of the worst you can get when compared to Boomkins or Affliction Warlocks. Additionally, if you couple all that with them being reliant on their pet to deal damage, which is likely to get snared, or even worse, killed in the fight, you end up with a class that's just not doing that much, despite how hard you try. As far as its crowd control goes. Sure, it's the same as marksmanship, but it doesn't bring that punchiness that MM can bring, so killing flag carriers and taking nodes is far more difficult. And even though it has the great hunter mobility with disengage, stealth, and feign death, unless you're taking nodes by trapping alone, you're not going to have much success. That's not to say that BM isn't viable though, as it can be a great defender with its defensives and ability to spin the base with its pet from far away while you can call for help. But honestly, outside defending and carrying orbs on Kamogu, you're pretty much dead weight. For those reasons, BM finds itself in the C tier, as even when you play football, you still need a goalie. Next up is Boomkin, which is incredibly powerful in Battleground Blitz, which is no surprise as it's dominated rated Battlegrounds for years. And although there isn't as many team fights in Battleground Blitz as there is in RBGs, meaning that the Starfall pad damage isn't getting as much value, its single target profile still makes it a very strong flag carrier killer with its incarnation. 
And it's not just great at killing flag carriers, it's also one of the few viable ranged flag carriers too, as its mobility is pretty strong with wild charge, sprints, and flap. All the while, its damage mitigation allows it to survive long enough till it reaches home base, with tools such as Heart of the Wild and Frenzy Regeneration bolstering its defenses if someone manages to catch up to them. As for its crowd control of Cyclone, Bash, and Root Beam, taking bases on its own or when accompanied by a rogue or hunter partner is a nightmare for the enemy team. Not just because the crowd controls are long enough to get the base, but because it has stealth, meaning the druid can pop up anywhere and put pressure on the node before the enemy team realizes. Finally, when it comes to team utility, Boomkin can actually bring some fairly decent heals, especially with its instant regrowths, so those small skirmishes get a lot easier to play, even if your healer is nowhere to be found. For all these reasons, we'll be placing Boomkin in the S tier, up with Marksmanship Hunter. Since these two specs have such amazing carry potential, you'll get insane value from our BG Blitz and from our class guides, which show you how to deal maximum damage in order to win those team fights and snipe those FCs. Next up we have the Frost Mage, which with all its snares can be a massive pain in the ass no matter what class you play. With crossing the map being so important in BG Blitz, and especially when you're facing a flag carrier like a Mistweaver Monk, having access to snares and roots is a lifesaver as you remove the other team's momentum. And when you couple those snares with Frost's high, unpreventable instant damage at the same time, you end up with a class that doesn't just stop momentum, but also reverses it by killing all the targets trapped in its web of slows. On top of that, Frost Mages are also one of the best dueling classes, no small part thanks to their Snowdrift stun talent, allowing them to 1v1 a ton of classes although they will take a beating from most hunters and ferals. Other than these factors, frost mages have that all-important ice wall, which is god tier on flag maps for stopping enemy flag carriers, as well as being ridiculously strong for ninja capping objectives as it removes line of sight. Finally, frost mages have some pretty fantastic mobility and greater invisibility, meaning they can dart around the map and complete objectives whenever they see fit. Due to all these factors, frost mages find themselves in the A tier. They aren't quite as dominant as MM hunters in 1v1s, and their stealth is a fairly long cooldown, but their impact on the game with their snares, teamfight cleave, and single target damage, and can easily carry games in the right hands. Moving on, we then have Fire Mages, who have all the utility of a Frost Mage, just without the snares. Fire Mages are in a weird spot in Blitz, as the Mage Kit is pretty powerful in general with all its crowd control and mobility. However, without having snares at its side like Frost does, Fire finds itself with a short end of the stick. This isn't too bad though, as Fire is known to do some pretty nasty cleave damage with its Ignite and Combust which with its recent buffs should see it dishing out some decent numbers in the coming weeks. And since all your damage does come from instants, it's actually pretty difficult to shut a fire mage down, unless the enemy healers are really on the ball with dispelling large ignites. That is where fire stops being viable though, as in 1v1s, it does find itself struggling with its lack of stun and kiting potential. And as mentioned earlier, not having slows makes it far less valuable on maps like Silver Shard Mines, where you want to snare players between carts, something Frost is very good at. So because of all these reasons, despite the recent damage buffs, Fire struggles to find a spot in the meta. It's got all the mage utility and some decent damage, but without those snares and slows, it just flat out falls behind Frost. For these reasons, Fire finds itself in the B tier. For the final mage spec, we then have Arcane, which did see some substantial buffs in the most recent patch. Arcane is actually dealing some pretty decent damage at the moment, so powerful in fact, that it was the winner of Cup 1 in the AWC on the North American region, so the spec definitely has potential. The only downside to Arcane's damage, however, is that you're pretty vulnerable to being locked out, as you need to cast so much to be viable, so once you climb to higher ratings, you may find yourself being shut down far more. As for the utility Arcane provides, you're in a similar spot to fire as you have that great mage kit just without frost mage snares so it's going to be weaker by default however with the added bonus of having the chrono shift talent you'll be able to cross the map far easier and escape fights with additional mobility which also benefits it in small fights as the spec is excellent at kiting to summarize arcane can deal some good damage in blitz when untouched and with its mobility you can make a pretty big impact on the bg However, with its lack of snares, stuns, and roots, it finds itself in a similar spot to fire where you'd rather just have a frost mage as arcane isn't bringing anything unique to the table. For these reasons, arcane's going in the B tier. Now it's time for Affliction Warlocks, another staple of classic rated battlegrounds since the dawn of time. Affliction has ridiculous AoE fight damage with its rot damage and malefic raptures cleaving down the entire team, which is excellent for maps like Battle of Gilneas. 
while also having great crowd control with its spammable fear, allowing it to CC cap when assisted by another player. Additionally, it has fantastic team utility with its health stones and gateway, making maps like Silver Shard far easier for your team to travel between carts. And to top it all off, it can also summon a pet and defend with ease, as it can survive long enough with its defensives till help is on the way. The only downside of Affliction is its mobility is fairly lackluster. Sure, it has gateway and portal, but crossing from A to B is far more difficult than a marksmanship hunter when you basically have to walk everywhere, or lose half your health to Burning Rush in the process. More so, teamfights aren't really as common in Blitz as they are in regular Battlegrounds, so that excellent spread pressure profile isn't really that significant on a handful of maps. For these reasons, despite being very good in its own right, Affliction finds itself in the A tier. Moving on, we then have the fan favorite, Destruction Warlocks, with Destro's preferred hero talent tree being Hellcaller, revolving around them applying Wither to multiple players and sending out instants to stack the debuff. You really start to wonder why you're not just playing Affliction instead. Destruction's damage is lower, it doesn't have Dispel Protection, and its signature scary Chaos Bolt damage is extremely telegraphed, making you likely to get shut down before you make much progress. And then when you couple that with the mobility issues Affliction has, it's just not the best class in the world in a game mode based on small scale fights and stealing bases. Don't get us wrong though, Destruction's not exactly unviable, and it can be excellent when defending bases or carts, as well as protecting your flag carrier when they get back to base with its massive damage, being able to kill the offensive team. However, there's just not much reason to play it over Affliction in any given scenario. Because of this, we're going to be placing Destruction in the B tier, as much like Fire and Arcane, it's just not the meta spec of the class right now. For the last Warlock spec, we have Demonology, which are really struggling in BG Blitz. This is because although their damage isn't the worst, they have to cast literally every spell, and when you've completed your spells, those pets you just summoned are very likely to either just die to cleave damage or get some form of micro CC on them, making them deal far less pressure than they should. Demonology also has another glaring issue that you only really realize when you play it, as it's just permanently stuck in combat due to summoning imps all the time. And when all your mobility is tied to mounting up, this can be a massive problem. The only saving grace of Demonology is it's great at spinning nodes with its Felguard's Blade Storm. And ninja capping is actually not that hard against one player when you can force Trinket with fear, and then just coil followed by your pet's stun while you cap the flag. Finally, it's also still a warlock at heart, so you do have access to gateway, health stones, and spammable CC, but you're just a weaker version of both your brethren specs. Sadly for Demonology Warlocks, there really isn't enough for to be ranked highly, as its strengths lie more in the Warlock class than the actual spec itself, making it a pretty low C tier spec. Remember though, being low tier isn't the end of the world, and even C tier specs can impact the game with good map knowledge. Moving on, we have Elemental Shamans, who don't really seem to have a role in BG Blitz. They aren't great in team fights, they aren't good in small skirmishes, and they don't really have much crowd control. It's safe to say Ellie Shamans are in a weird spot. This is largely because their damage is quite rampy, which doesn't make it ideal for going after nodes on their own, as the time to kill is just too long. And when they're in the team fight, well, Flame Shock is one of the easier abilities to dispel, while completely screwing over the Shaman's damage in the process. As for their crowd control, which is basically just Hex and Lasso, it's very niche. Most classes can dispel Hex, and Lasso makes the Shaman unable to take any action while it's going off, so ninjaing on their own doesn't really happen. And although Elemental does have that all-important knockback of Thunderstorm, this only really gets value on a small amount of maps, making it once again not that strong. As for utility, this is where Shamans generally shine, as having Grounding Totem, a short interrupt, and passive healing from Totems and Earth Shield can be a nice addition, but when compared to other casters, it's just not enough to swing a fight. And as for mobility, although Ghost Wolf sounds strong on paper, we're not in vanilla anymore, and mobility has moved past a 30% sprint. In conclusion, Shamans just don't bring that much to the table and are going in the C tier because of it. Next up are Shadow Priests, who are probably every melee's favorite train target. Shadow Priests have to cast every spell in their kit to do a crumb of damage in BG Blitz, which when combined with their pitiful dispel protection is a real pain point for the class. Shadow also has very weak mobility, relying on its feathers to move around, which makes it the perfect target for melees to drill into the ground, as they won't be able to kite at all while being shut down on every single damaging spell they have. And if that wasn't enough, Shadow also has to ramp its damage, so you can't just turn up at a base and start blasting. You need to build insanity first, making it a pretty bad skirmisher. 
It's not all bad for Shadow though, as their instant crowd controls of Silence and Horrify can turn team fights, as they can lock out healers on their own. And with Mind Control and Fear, they can actually be pretty annoying when accompanied by someone else, but realistically, Shadow is just a bad warlock that is much easier to shut down and without the benefits of Gateway and Healthstone. So much like Elemental Shaman, it will be in the C tier. Devastation, on the other hand, is the complete opposite of Shadow Priest. Its damage is absurd, it has crazy mobility with its hovers, and it doesn't have to ramp up at all to start doing 1 million DPS. Because of all these factors, Devastation is actually good on every single map, as it can win out teamfights, kill flag carriers, move between bases, and even flag carry itself if worse comes to worse, as it can't even be snared while it hovers, allowing it to cover ground incredibly fast. Devastation also comes with pretty unique utility like Swoop, which allows them to separate players and fights or even assist with capping bases, as well as Chrono Loop, which can flat out win games if it's not dispelled. And if all that wasn't enough, it can also give some healing to its partners and rescue when needed, allowing it to be pretty good in 2v2 scenarios. The only thing Devastation is really lacking is stealth, and the ability to spin the flag when crowd controlled, as once that trinket's blown, that base is gone. But with all the other factors, who cares? Devastation is sitting pretty in the A tier. Finally, we have Augmentation, which is literally just Devastation, but worse. It's got the same mobility, so it can move around the map and apply pressure to bases with its sleep and assist its teaming, but without the damage to back it up, there's really no reason to play Augmentation over Devastation in any scenario. And although it does buff the team through its stat increase, the class itself just doesn't have that much impact, so we're going to be placing it on its own in the D tier. So here's our final tier list for ranged in BG Blitz. With Boomkin being the winner of the absolute best ranged, it can quite literally do everything from assaulting bases, to killing flag carriers, to even being the flag carrier themselves, a true jack of all trades. But remember, being low tier does not mean being doomed for failure. If you're serious about climbing in BG Blitz, you definitely need to check out our brand new map course, which can only be found at skillcap.com. You'll learn the strategies which actually work, and even better, we will teach you exactly what mistakes to avoid. If you pair our Blitz guides with our brand new class courses that teach you how to maximize damage and more, you'll have everything you need to instantly climb. The best part, you can try all this out completely risk-free, since if you don't rank up while actively using Skillcap, you get your money back, no questions asked. You can unlock all this right now through the discount you can only get from the link below. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted. All right, and that will do it for this one. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.